Hello everyone, hello, welcome, welcome to Spring Stargazing from Your Window with me, Paul. Hello, I am the assistant planetarium producer at We The Curious and every week at Wednesday 11am on Facebook I'm going to bring you some things that you can see in the nighttime sky from your window. And I'm going to be using a bit of software called Stellarium. If you've watched the other episodes, you're familiar with this. It's a free bit of planetarium software that anyone can download to their computer for absolutely free. Just go to Stellarium.org. So that means if you haven't got a good view out your window or if there's too many clouds in the sky, then that don't matter. Because all you got to do is, uh, is use Stellarium and you can see the things that I'm going to show you. Now today I want to show you one of my favourite things in the sky. I say that about everything, but it's true, this one is great. Uh, before we start that though, just want to remind you that, um, well, you can follow along with this in the comments. You can ask me some questions about space. You can tell me some of the things that you've seen in the sky already over the past few weeks. And my friend Tom is online under the We The Curious name and he'll be answering your questions as well as we go through this. And I'll have a go at answering some of them too. Um, and if we don't get around to answering your questions during the show, then I'll be online later on and I'll try and answer them in the comments myself. Now, let's have a think. Well, I tell you what, first thing we'll do is go over to the comments and uh, and say hello to some people. See if see if I'm getting through to you. So let's have a look. Uh, hey, fantastic. Hello, John T. Hello. Hello, Rachel and Lincoln. Hello, Heidi, Nate, and Sunny. Nice to see you. Fantastic. Brilliant. And Tom's online too. Fantastic. Brilliant stuff. Well, I think it's time to go over to Stellarium so I can show you how to find what we're going to be looking at today. So let's go over to Stellarium. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. And once again, beautiful view of the daytime sky. So what we're going to do is bring our cursor over to the left. Get our little menu screen up. Click on this little clock. There we go. And you'll see it's today's date, 13th of May 2020, and it's four minutes past 11. I'm going to take us forward in time. Doop, 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 doop. Unless we go forward in time. Here we go. We're going to go later than we usually go to the wee hours of the morning. <coughs> Pardon me. But don't worry too much, I am taking you quite late into the night. But don't worry too much, because what I'm going to show you... Well, we'll go into it a bit later on. Right, so it's about 20 past 4 in the morning, tomorrow morning. And uh, we're going to get our bearings. And the best way to get our bearings is to spin around. Look, it's sunrise, it's dawn, almost. We're going to look up into the sky and we're going to look for a familiar shape, the shape of the saucepan. And if you've seen our previous episodes, you'll know... Oh, I've just spotted something. Can you see it moving? Sorry to go off from what I was talking about, but look at that. It's a satellite. Look at that. Ooh, NORAD. So that's an American defense satellite. That's quite exciting. So there we go. If you do get up tomorrow morning and you're looking in this direction, in the sky, then you might see a satellite. Very exciting. Anyway, where was I? I digress. That's right, we're looking for this familiar shape here. The shape of the saucepan. And the reason I'm showing you the saucepan again is because we can use it to get our bearings. Once we've found the saucepan in the sky, and remember, you can see it all year round, very big, very bright, very easy to see. And we can go from the lip of the pan. One, two, three, four, five. Till we get to Polaris, the North Star, which never, ever, ever seems to move. Will always stay in the same place in the sky, no matter what time of year it is. Once you've found Polaris, the North Star, you know that you're looking towards the North. And indeed, if I press Q, there we go. Look at that. We've got our little 
compass point on. We know we're looking towards the north. So we've got our bearings. Let's turn around until we're looking towards the southeast. And you can see in the southeast we've got the moon. And over here we've got these very bright objects here. We've got another bright object here. And you'll remember if you saw our Venus episode that if that bright point of light in the sky that you're looking at isn't twinkling or isn't quite twinkling quite as much as the other lights in the sky, then chances are you are looking not at a star, but at a planet. And that is indeed what these three things are. This is Jupiter. This is Saturn. But this is the one I want to focus on. Mars. There we go. And look at that. Mars has got a bit of a reddish tint to it. Now, why is Mars red? A lot of people assume, and I used to assume this too, that Mars is red because it's this really hot, fiery place full of lava and volcanoes and oh, just all kinds of um, all kinds of hotness, basically. But this isn't the case. Mars is actually really cold. In fact, there's ice on the top and ice on the bottom. And uh, it's further away from the sun than us. So it's not getting as much heat from the sun. And also Mars has got a very thin atmosphere. So there's not much atmosphere there to keep the heat from the sun trapped around the planet. So it does get very cold. In fact, I've got it written down here. It can get down to uh, minus 60 degrees Celsius is the average temperature on Mars. And near the poles in the winter, the icy poles, it can get down to minus 125 degrees Celsius. So it is cold on Mars. Now, why is it red? Well, that's because there's a lot of iron on Mars. So there's a lot of iron oxide, a lot of rusty red dust covering the whole planet and that is what gives mars its red color and that's why it looks a bit reddy orangey red in the sky now you might have noticed that mars isn't the brightest object it's not the brightest planet jupiter is much fatter and brighter and of course we're at half past four in the morning so you might be thinking paul why are you showing us something else that we have to get up in the wee hours of the morning to see well there is a reason I'm showing you because this is basically a really cool year for Mars. 2020 is a good year for Mars. And uh, you see, the thing is, is that Mars won't stay at this brightness. Uh, Mars will get brighter and it's all to do with how far away Mars is from the Earth. Now, Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun and Earth is the third. Earth takes about a year to orbit the sun and mars takes roughly about two years 687 days to be exact to orbit the sun now this means that while mars might be far away from earth one year the following year it'll get a lot closer to earth mars will get a lot closer to earth and this means it'll get bigger and brighter in the sky now let me show you what i mean so I'm just going to go over to this picture I've made. Do, do, do. Now you can see there, this is May 2019, May last year. And you can see Mars, it's that little red point in the sky there. And underneath we've got a picture of the solar system. And you can see Mars and you can see the Earth. And there's the sun in the middle. And you can see that Mars is quite far away from Earth. Let's compare that to this year. Now, this is May 2020, right now, basically, this time of year. And you can see that Mars has gotten brighter. And if we look at the picture of the solar system, you can see that Earth has got closer to Mars. Earth is catching up to Mars. And it's going to keep on catching up to Mars. Let's have a look at October 2020. So in October 2020, you can see Mars is bigger and fatter and brighter in the sky. And if we look at our picture of the solar system, Earth is right up close to Mars. It is caught up with Mars. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that October is going to be a very good time to see Mars. Because it's going to be visible from dusk till dawn. 
by October for a start. So you'll be able to see Mars all night in October. And on October the 6th, Earth will come closest to Mars uh, this year. It'll be about uh, 62 million kilometers away from Mars. And you compare that to now, I've got it written down here, at the moment, May 2020, Mars is 170 kilometers away from Earth. But by October, it'll be 62 million kilometers away from Earth. So, it's going to be big, fat, bright, visible all night by October. So, don't worry if you don't want to get up at half four in the morning today. Just wait a few months and Mars will be brighter and redder and easier to spot. Let's go back to Stellarium because I want to zoom in on Mars a bit. So, we'll left click on Mars. Here he is. And we'll press uh, the space bar, get it into the middle there. And I'm going to press pick up, page up to zoom in. I'll keep clicking that until we're close enough. Do, do, do. <gasps> there we go. Oh, look at that. You can see Mars's moons there. You can see Phob I think that's Phobos and that's Deimos over there. That's Mars. Mars has got two moons. Let's zoom in on Mars. Look at that. We've got a lovely view of Mars. In Stellarium. Now, over a hundred years ago, you can imagine that we didn't get quite this good a view of Mars through our telescopes. Our telescopes weren't as advanced. And over a hundred years ago, people used to look at Mars through their telescopes, and a lot of them thought they could see canals. They thought they could see uh, bodies of water, like long sort of roads of water crisscrossing the planet. And they thought that there might be intelligent aliens on Mars, taking water from the North Pole, from the South Pole, around the planet, where, where these Martians could use it to, to drink. And, uh, well, not everyone thought this, but a lot of people did, and a lot of very sort of... Uh, Influential people did. There's a man called Percival Lowell, who was a very popular scientist in the day. A lot of people, listen, a lot of the general public used to listen to him, and he thought there were canals on Mars. Now, these days we know, of course, that there aren't any canals on Mars. Our telescopes have gotten better, and we can see that there's no canals, no intelligent life that we can see, and, uh, well, no water on the surface either. But let me show you a picture of something. This is a picture from our dome in We the Curious. So this isn't a Stellarium picture, it's from our dome. Look at that. Now this is Mars as we think it would have looked billions of years ago. Billions of years ago. Scientists think that Mars was covered in water. It had a vast ocean. And we think this because Mars is not covered in canals, but it is covered in like canyons and dried riverbeds and lots of features carved into the rock that resemble features on Earth that have been carved into the rock by water. So we think all these features were carved into the surface of Mars billions of years ago by water. Now you might be wondering, why didn't this water stick around? Well, the problem is, is that Mars doesn't have a magnetic field. Earth has got a lovely magnetic field, but Mars has a very, 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 very weak one. And so there was nothing to protect Mars from something we call charged particles. And these particles come from the sun. Now, we are safe from these charged particles on Earth because our magnetic field protects us. But Mars... Its magnetic field was too weak to protect it from these charged particles and it stripped away Mars's atmosphere, left it with a very thin atmosphere. And so the water turned to gas and drifted off into space, leaving Mars as the dry, dusty place that we know and love today. Well, scientists um, think that, uh, you might be wondering actually, you might be wondering, well, was there life? There might not be intelligent life now, but was there life on Mars billions of years ago when they had this water? That's a really good question. Now, the thing is, scientists don't think this water was around for long enough for life to develop. 
And if life did develop in that, because it takes a very long time for life to develop, and if the water was around long enough for life to develop, then it would be very, very simple forms of life, like microorganisms. But we still don't know everything we, uh, we want to about Mars, and we're learning new things all the time. And there might be no aliens on Mars, but it is a planet inhabited entirely by robots. I always think that's a really cool way of looking at Mars. Mars is a planet of robots. And we know Mars is a planet of robots because we put them there. Uh, I say we, not we the curious. But scientists from Earth put those robots on Mars. We've been sending probes to Mars since the 60s. Now some of them just flew by Mars and collected information on the way. Some of them orbited Mars and some of them actually landed on Mars. And uh, well, some of them crashed or lost information, uh, stopped sending information straight away. Not all these missions have been successful, but quite a few have. And I want to talk about uh, some of the robots that are currently on Mars. At the moment, there are two robots on Mars. Uh, and they're sending back information to Earth. Two active robots on Mars, I should say. Uh, one's called Insight and one's called Curiosity. And I'm going to show you where they are. Here we go. Here's a map of Mars. I got this from Google Maps, by the way. I've put Curiosity and Insight on myself. But the map is from Mar um, from Google Maps. All you got to do is go to Google Google Maps zoom out until you get into space on the satellite view and then a little menu on the side will come up for all these different space things and one of them is Mars. It's really cool. Give that a go. It's brilliant. But anyway, this is a map of Mars and I've shown you where Curiosity is and where InSight is. You can see they're quite far away from each other. Now InSight can't move. It stays in the same place. NASA sent InSight by the way. And uh, it landed in 2018, and it's looking deep beneath Mars's surface. And one of the things it's doing as well is detecting quakes on Mars. And Curiosity, Curiosity is brilliant, because Curiosity, again, was sent by NASA. It landed in 2012 in a place called the Gale Crater, and it's a rover. Now, a Mars rover is sort of like a remote-controlled car that scientists control from Earth. And it, it is the size of a car. Curiosity is the size of a car. And uh, it's going around Mars on four wheels, and it's investigating Mars and sending back this information to Earth. There have been four rovers sent to Mars altogether. Uh, they're called Sojourner, Spirit, Opportunity, and curiosity now sojourner spirit and opportunity they have stopped working in fact opportunity stopped working in 2018 when its solar panels got covered in dust and so it couldn't get any more power from the sun and so it just stopped working oh. but that's okay because curiosity is still working even after eight years and it's sending back loads of information to earth so Curiosity is investigating if Mars once had the potential to li for life. It's investigating if Mars used to have what life would need to survive. And that isn't just water. It's also looking for the right chemical ingredients in the soil, in the, in the, in the dirt. And the way, one of the ways it's doing this is that it's drilling down into the rock because scientists think Gale, the Gale Crater where Curiosity is, used to be full of water. And so they're drilling down into what was once the bottom of this big lake. And uh, uh, Curiosity is investigating the powder that comes from drilling into this rock. And it's looking for the right chemical ingredients that might have, so evidence of the chemical ingredients that might have supported life. And it's actually found what we call organic molecules. Now these organic molecules don't necessarily mean that there was definitely life on Mars. But it's a step in the right direction. So it's quite hopeful. Maybe there was these tiny little microorganisms on Mars years ago. We're finding new stuff out all the time. Who knows? Now, Curiosity also takes pictures. In fact, 
Curiosity takes selfies. And I want to show you a selfie of Curiosity. This is really exciting. This is an actual photograph I'm about to show you from the surface of Mars. Look at that. You are looking at Mars. If you were standing on Mars, this is what it would look like. Isn't that amazing? And this is Curiosity in the picture. It's got a big robot arm with a camera on the end, like a selfie stick. And it can take pictures of itself. And it's taken loads of selfies. And it's taken loads of great pictures from Mars. In fact, uh, other photos have been taken by other rovers too. So just Google some of these photos. Google some of the rover pictures of Mars because there's some amazing photographs. And this is one of them. This is uh, Curiosity on a sand dune in the Gale Crater. And on this sand dune, it was scooping up sand. And uh, he was studying the sand samples. And that's what, it, that's what it's doing in this picture anyway. <laughs> well, that's not the end. Curiosity is going on indefinitely. And they've extended its mission indefinitely. So they'll keep getting information back from Curiosity until it stops working. And we don't know when that will be. Uh, hopefully not for a while. But there's another rover being sent to Mars. Uh, there's a rover called Perseverance that's going to be sent to Mars beginning of next year, hopefully. And they're going to send it quite far away from Curiosity, all the way over there. And uh, Perseverance, this rover, is going to be looking for signs of past life. And it's also going to be seeing if maybe humans could one day explore Mars. Because, yeah, that's the ultimate goal, sending people to Mars. Now lots of people are trying to make this happen and they've been trying to make this happen for years. Now you know uh, Elon Musk's private company SpaceX they're always claiming that they can send people there soon. NASA want to do it soon. There's talk of doing it by the 2030s. I don't know if that'll be possible. It's going to be really hard but who knows? Who knows? Um, and also um, it's it, it will if you think about it, right, Mars is really far away. It'll take about between 150 and 300 days to get to Mars. So imagine being on a small rocket ship for 300 days, cramped together with the same people. And also when you get to Mars then, you've got like, you, you know, you, you, it's really cold there. There's no air to no air that you can breathe. It's a very thin atmosphere, and uh, there's no water to drink. So it's going to be very very difficult living on Mars. But you know what? I think if what we've been through in the past couple of months has proved anything, is that human beings are amazing and we can adapt and we can we can we can work together to go through almost anything. So and of course we're getting all this wonderful information. We've sent robots to Mars. That's amazing too. So human beings are completely brilliant. And I think that it won't be long before we get some people on Mars. We'll just have to wait and see though. Anyway, I've been waffling on for ages there. So let's go back to Facebook and see if anybody's got some questions. Let's have a look. Do, do, do. Oh, hello, Rupert and Ophelia. Hello, Sarah and Rowan. Hello, James. Hello, Erin and Jake. Nice to see you. That's my niece and nephew, that is. Hello. Uh, hello, Emily. Oh, uh, Thomas, age nine. Could Mars be habitable? Well, you know, like I was saying, it's, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. We'd have to build little habitats of our own to, to live there. We'd have to um, find a way... We'll have to take oxygen for us to breathe. We'd have to take water for us to drink and maybe recycle water like they do on the International Space Station. And uh, there's all kinds of obstacles to overcome. But like I was saying, I think, I think yes, people will find a way. Definitely. Uh, oh, hello, Charlie. Do, do, do. Let's see. What other questions? Hello. Hello, Tisha from Brisbane. Oh, Jake, my nephew, has asked, how many moons does Mars have? Well, we saw them, didn't we? As we were zooming to Mars on Stellarium. Phobos and Deimos. It's got two moons. Oh, that's a good question from Heather Backway. Who named the planets? Well, um, oh, 
There we go. And I think Lydia has answered them there. They were named after some of the mythological Roman and Greek gods. So, yeah, that's where the names of these planets come from. Mars was the Roman god of war. Because when the Romans looked at this uh, red light in the sky, this red fiery light, it reminded them of the colour of blood and the fires of war. And so they named it after their god of war. But as we've seen, Mars is very different from that. It's actually a cold, peaceful place. So about the name is stuck. And interestingly, the Romans weren't the only ones who named it after their god of war. The Greeks called it Ares after their god of war. And there was a culture before that as well that uh, named it after their god of war. I can't remember who it was. So it's really interesting where these names come from. And it's really interesting once you start looking into the names of constellations and planets, how different cultures and civilizations over time have seen the same thing when they've looked into the sky and thought the same thoughts. We're all not so different. So, do, 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 do. Lincoln would like to know why there are robots on Mars. Well, um, because we sent them there. That's why. And they're getting all that lovely information for us. That's why they're there, gathering information. Oh, lots of questions about Mars's moons. Mark, there's so much to say about Mars. Do you know what? At some point in the future, I might do another one of these on Mars. Because Mars is absolutely fascinating. There's loads to say about it. Oh, Charlotte has a book about Mars. It is very interesting. Feel free to share the name of the book. I'm always up for a recommendation about a good book about space. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, here we go. I didn't know this. Um, Tom has said that it's got six wheels that it uses to get around Mars's tricky terrain. Well, there we go. I didn't know that. I thought it had four wheels, but it's got six wheels. There we go. I've learned that. Why is Perseverance going so far away? Well, they want to explore a different area and they narrowed it down to a crater called, what's it called? The Jezero Crater. That's where they're sending Perseverance. So... You've got um, Curiosity and the Gale Crater, and they're sending Perseverance to the Jezero Crater. So that means that it's uh, it's just a different area. They've narrowed it down. All those things they're looking for, evidence of life, seeing if Mars will be habitable for people. They've looked all over Mars, the scientists have, and they think Jezero Crater will be the best place, based on what they know, to learn these different things. And you've seen why they sent Curiosity to the Gale Crater, because they think there was a there was a lake there so uh, billions of years ago. So they thought the Gale Crater was the best place for what they wanted Curiosity to find out. Really good question, Rupert. Do, do, do. Oh, crikey. How do we know it was water on Mars and not a different liquid, Heidi has said. Oh, that's a really good question. Do you know what? I don't 100% know that. I suppose it would have something to do with um, the chemicals that uh, and the ingredients that have been found in the soil by the rovers. But you know what? I don't 100% know for sure. That's a, that's a really interesting question. That Can you imagine that? So a liquid that isn't water. And if you look at uh, somewhere like Titan... Titan is one of the moons of Saturn, and that's got loads of oceans, but that the oceans on Titan are a completely different chemical. They're not it's not water at all. So yeah, it's a good question. Maybe it was something like that on Mars. I'm pretty sure though, based on what we know, we think it was water. But I don't I don't know off the top of my head why we're so sure it's water. I'll look into that, Heidi. Thank you. Well, after Mars what is the next set target for sending people to? Where should humans look for life? That's what Lloyd's asked for. Well, that's a really great question. Um, well, I think if you're looking for life in our solar system, again, it's going to be tiny microorganisms, tiny little microbes, I think. And, um, well, it's possible that we might find them on Europa. We talked about Europa briefly the other day, I think, when we were looking at Jupiter. Because Europa has got these plumes of water jetting out from cracks in the ice. And they resemble plumes of water, geysers that we have shooting out from the water on it, from the um, from underwater on Earth. And we know that on Earth, there's these tiny little organisms feeding off the chemicals from these plumes of water. So we think that maybe they could 
be life like that, similar to that, feeding off the plumes of water, the chemicals in the plumes of water on Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter. And there's also a moon of Saturn called Enceladus that has similarly these plumes of water. So I think that is where we'd be looking for life, Enceladus and Europa. But who knows? Ooh, and Charlotte said it's called Space, a children's encyclopedia. Ah, I'm going to check that out, definitely. I'm always looking for books to buy my niece and nephew. But you know what? I've been talking loads today. So um, I'm going to leave it there now because it's half past 11. But I will say, though, that on our website, we have got a an activity where you can make your own tabletop rover. We've already shared it on Facebook and it's on our um it's on our website as well. Tom will share a link for us, hopefully. And uh, so have a look for that. See if you can make your own rover. And if you do make your own tabletop rover, um, be sure to show it to me next week. Show me some pictures of this tabletop rover because I would absolutely love to see if you manage to make it. And uh, next week, I think we might be talking about the moon. But to be honest with you, I haven't fully decided yet. So, uh, but I will let you know as soon as possible on the Facebook page, on the We The Curious Facebook page. Watch this space and we shall see what we're going to be looking at next week. Wednesday, 11 o'clock. And Thomas shared the link. Anyway, I'll see you next week. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Bye bye. See you later.